Salton Sea was a blast. The canyons were phenomenal, and the people I got to fly them with were even better. I made some pretty awesome connections out in that dirty old desert, and with the next day looking too windy to fly, it was time to say our goodbyes and come up with a game plan for the remainder of the trip. As usual, I woke up to a swarm of buzzing paramotors. I've been doing a lot of sitting around lately, so after stumbling upon a bunch of these neat metal sculptures in the middle of the desert, I decided to knock out a hike to the Palm Canyon Oasis. An awesome little hike with a cool destination, but then again, the whole thing could have just been a mirage at this point. That evening, I wanted to launch from the Ocotillo Wells Airport, but a guy on a dirt bike needed my help jump-starting his truck. We ended up talking until the sun had set, and I decided to head towards the Glamis Sand Dunes to set up camp that night. <laughs> I woke up bright and early to find that a bunch of guys from the Salton Sea had also made their way to the dunes. I didn't plan on staying long, but I did have some unfinished business to take care of after the last time I flew here. Gotta love the sand dunes, because when you grow up, you just need a bigger sandbox to play in. I flew alongside some of the top pilots in the game out here, carving through the sand, tracing each ripple with my feet, like each dune was a wave and a sea of sand. I followed dune buggies and watched a pilot foot drag right into a sand trap. Somehow, he managed to set up and fly back out of there. I gave Nick a friendly pilot's handshake just as the wind began to ramp up. It was too windy to fly, so I hopped in with a guy from Sacramento and we carved up the dunes from the ground. I drove east, trying to decide where to go next. Randomly, I shot a text to my friend Brian of Air Force Paramotors and asked if he was flying near Phoenix that night. He quickly dropped me a pin and I arrived just as the balloons were setting sail. Brian, you sure you don't want to come? I still want you to possibly see if the geometry is there, but if you get back late... Yeah, I'd like to give you some feedback on it. So, Brian manufactures his own paramotor called the Mantis. An incredible design, as strong as they come, while maintaining that lightweight feature we all desire. I ran out of daylight pretty quick and didn't get a fly at this time, but I'm still praying to fly the Mantis one of these days. This wasn't my first time flying with balloons, but man, some things never get old. It was, however, my first time flying around saguaro cactuses, which were equally cool. There's something incredible about life on the road. I woke up that morning not knowing where I'd be that night, and I never could have dreamed I'd be near Phoenix flying with balloons. 
Had I not broken a propeller at Glamis a few months back, I never would have met Brian, and none of this footage would even exist. So, shout out to Spontaneous Road Trips, reassuring me that everything happens for a reason. And even the worst experiences teach a lesson and have an overall positive outcome in the end. Exploring a new area by butt fan is always a good time, but I had to make a decision that night. Either I wait around in Phoenix for a few days for the flying circus fly-in, or I could cross off a few more bucketless flights and make it home a couple days earlier than planned. The weather wasn't looking the greatest in southern Arizona, but luckily my mind is a map of the west and I had plenty of ideas. Woo. That was awesome. I loved it. I really didn't want to come down. I thanked Brian for letting me come fly with them, and I pointed the wheel towards Winslow, Arizona. Route 66 has plenty of quirky hidden gems, but I was about to fly out to one of the biggest gems, hiding in plain sight. Alrighty, we are out here, standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. Still haven't seen any flatbed Fords, Whew. but I'm hopeful. What I'm planning on seeing is a giant meteor crater. I'm fascinated with anything from outer space. This thing's 50,000 years old, almost a mile across. It's good stuff. It's, it's good stuff. Yeah, we're gonna wanna nail this one on the first try, even though we're not laid out, even close to correct. We're gonna have to make a quick little 90 degree turn. We're just gonna have to hit it hard. Bottom line, run fast, hit it hard. I'm not set up right at all. Should really change that. Probably gonna trip and fall. That's all part of it. One, two, three. All right, beauty. Not really beauty, but you know how that goes. Oh, come on, man. This is frustrating. Not the best LZ in the world. But are we gonna make it happen anyways? Maybe. <laughs> This was probably by far the fastest I've ever ran in ski pants. I definitely tripped at one point, but the fact I didn't face plant meant I was almost flying. So I kept my legs moving and throttled out. With an elevation well above 5,000 feet, nothing about this takeoff was easy. Throw in temps in the teens and a sketchy campground runway, and the odds of making it to this ancient asteroid were astronomically against me. But as the old saying goes, You guys silly? I'm still gonna send it. This was by far the coldest flight of the trip. And the GoPro thought so too when it decided to literally freeze up on the flight back. The landing was surprisingly uneventful considering the tight campground. But overall, flying to the crater was an out of this world experience to say the very least. Nearby, there was some impressive graffiti and something labeled Apache Death Cave that I was more than willing to drive out of my way to go see. So yeah, found this place called Apache Death Cave on Google Maps. So of course, here I am checking it out. Cause how can you not? It's dark, it's spooky, but it's awesome. Yeah, it goes way back into something. There's a couple rooms that lead off to the side here. Man, what a weird feeling. Ow. 
And then we're back out. How cool is that? After a morning of spelunking, I headed north past some neat dinosaur tracks and made a pit stop in Monument Valley. This view never gets old. Forrest Gump might be my all-time favorite movie, and if it wasn't for the 20 mile an hour gusting wind, I would have nailed a pretty cool photo op. Next, I cruised past the picturesque Mexican hat. At this point, I was pretty much going wherever the wind blew me, or wasn't blowing in this case, which led me to the most incredible LZ in Valley of the Gods. Oh, hey, we're getting cold, so I grabbed gloves. I'll put the other one on in flight. Whew. Also added a hoodie. Why? Why is it doing that? I don't understand. Take 17. I rushed the takeoff and somehow managed to get a brake line twisted up. You don't get many second chances out here. Even though I was beyond ready to get up in the air, I definitely made the right call to abort the takeoff. Let's try that one more time. It's okay. If you just take your time to do it right, that could have been a big deal up there. And we don't want big deals. Whew, that's a good catch though, good catch. The brake line could have easily been fixed in flight, but the 152 square miles of cell phone receptionless Navajo land is about as extreme as it gets, so I wasn't about to take any chances. It's said that the sacred buttes and pinnacles within the valley contain spirits of ancient Navajo warriors. Well, they clearly didn't find my ski Kansas hoodie as funny as I did when they decided to throw some kinks in my takeoff. I flew for miles and miles and came up close to the 1500 foot plateau wall bordering the valley before catching some less than inviting rotor. At this point, I was at the mercy of the gods and had no choice but to respect the beauty from a distance. I just sat there floating for what felt like hours and didn't see another soul in sight. The wind did an odd 180 degree shift, so I decided to bring it in for a landing. <laughs> the Valley of the Gods was breathtaking. After a post-flight celebratory dance, I hung out until dark and checked out the spectacular night sky. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is beautiful. To finish out the night, I drove the 17 mile loop through the valley just beyond grateful to be living in an unforgettable moment.